All right, Trace, hello and good afternoon. It is the 5th of April, 2020. I didn't know my battery was that low. We are going to get through this before it cuts out. Uh, what am I going to talk about? All right, let's just talk about, I've got the Aussie up, so let's talk about the Aussie. So let's bring up the daily chart just to see how it actually ended for the week. I have a little bit of something on my screen. Okay, so I haven't traded the Aussie this week and I was sort of discussing it and you know, thinking about what it was going to do. I traded the euro short and I went short on the USDM, which was a failed trade as well. I'll bring that up. I, I'd like to really call this probably more of a watch list video than an end of cap, end of week recap as well. So I've, I've already mentioned my trade, so nothing had changed since my previous video. And I was talking about what I was watching for. Oil made a move. I actually was really strongly contemplating getting in on Friday night. Um, but I ended up having a bit of a Call of Duty mobile bender, and I didn't trade. Which, you know, NFP seemed to be, even though the numbers were catastrophic, you know, it looked like the US dollar actually uh, moved higher against a lot of the pairs. I mean, we've got the Kiwi as well, very similar. Actually, not as, that's the that's the four, I'll bring the daily up. If it wants to load for me. And it sort of did. Uh, the Euro... Okay, I lied, it, the euro didn't, and so you'd think that with everything you would see risk off, but it's sort of the US moved higher against the yen, which is very interesting. So I didn't really miss much in regards to rational trading opportunities, it seems that the market is sort of, and the pound, I'll bring the pound up on the, on the daily to see what that did. It just shows you guys that the current trading climate is pretty erratic and that the market is sort of just absorbing this information and doing what it wants to do. So you've got to pay close attention to that and don't just sort of have one concrete trading idea. You've got to have what if scenarios. That's something I learned from SMB Capital. Um, I've watched a lot of their content. I haven't done any of their courses, but Mike Bellafiori, I've read his books. Uh, they're fantastic. One Good Trade and The Trading Book. The game plan. I can't remember. There's two books he's written, and I'm sorry I can't remember them off by heart. Definitely check out Mike Bellafiore though. Um, One good trade is is fantastic. I've, I've got that on, as an audio book as well, and I've listened to that multiple times. Um, but there are you know an equities prof firm in, based in New York, but they're they're big on what if scenarios. So that's something you've got to keep in mind and be flexible with. But I'll just bring up the euro. It's pretty interesting. I'd I'd like to think that this still can go further short, but you know, Europe and the US are both under a lot of stress with their economy, so it's hard to say. Um, the Aussie looks a bit cleaner and is making more sense to me. So what I'll what I will look at is Monday if it can just hover around this level, maybe even come back above sixty cents, um, give us a little bit of a wick for a rejection, like something like even something like this would be good. You know, and then fail to get through 60 cents and hold it, and then we could have a short in our hands. And we've got a, a little bit downside recently that could get uh, retested, so we could, you know, get well and truly below 59 cents and, you know, sort of go from there. So it's just you don't want to overthink things in regards to coronavirus, although it seems that Australia is much more insulated from the situation that is greatly affecting Europe and America. America is, is, you know, like the epicenter nearly. It's looking like it could really get bad. So I'm going to watch the Aussie doll. That's going to be my focus, really. Um, uh, the pound looks like it has some downside potential as well. I'm going to, if I click that, that will help. But we'll see what Monday brings. Monday, information gathering day. I've said this before. And let's actually have a look at the Swiss as well. That sort of looks long to me, uh, to be fair. What about the CAD? I'm ill-prepared, and I apologize for that, guys. Bring the four hour candlesticks. I prefer the white on black instead of the uh, the green bars, to be honest. I put the on white here. Well, it sort of looks, I mean, on the daily... It's it's making higher highs. It's you know, and with uh you know, 
Canada exports a lot of oil and we'll see though in regards to the price of oil and if it gaps up this is not going to be a long but if it does get lower for some reason I don't see it doing that but if it does ease off into next week this could be uh, you know a potential trend trade and we might see some continued upwards momentum um, but just the Aussie is a little cleaner that's what I like I'll bring the four out just to conclude the video sort of broken down from its range as well if we get something like this maybe even with a longer week that's what I'd like to see for a potential sell and I think I'm going to conclude the video there guys so Aussie dollar uh, potentially short CAD maybe along depending on what oil wants to do and Swiss might be long the pound more like in the pound short this looks like its first proper rejection so we'll see if it wants to push a lot. So there's a little bit of potential there. And the euro, euro short as well as what I'm looking at just right now. That can change, obviously. If we get some, you know, if the daily candle on Monday closes near its high, I'm like, well, then I want to, Tuesday is going to have to be a dramatically a bad trading session for the euro to, to, for me to want to short it. All right, that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll upload this straight away. And hope everyone is having a great weekend so far.